Hi everybody, this is Kwai Gonjin here, bringing you probably my absolute favorite role-playing game I've played in the last few years. This tops Fallout, this tops Witcher 3, this tops all of the games I've played that have come out in the last two or three years. I think I've even, even my modded Skyrim, I get more out of this game than just about any role-playing game ever. It's one of the only role-playing games where when I play, I actually want to play the role of my character. I want to act as if I have that character in mind at all times. So, I already pre-recorded the first half hour of this game, but the intro messed up. So I wanted to introduce you to Pillars of Eternity with both White March expansions in it. I have played this already, but I'm going to role-play with you. I'm going to story-tell with you and act as if, act as if my character is me act as if I am making the decisions based on this character. Now the first time I beat this game I was selfish and I very much played just to complete the game. I, I put a lot of time into it but I did not try to complete all of my companions quests. I did not live for them. I live for myself. This time I'm gonna be more selfless and keep in mind that I want to affect the world around me more. And you'll see why at the end of the game, because at the end of the game, the story that they tell about what happens to your companions is largely based on how you lived your life with them. And I definitely got the selfish end of the story last time. So anyway, without further ado, we're gonna cut to me at the character creation and uh, we'll get into it. All right, guys, enjoy. We'll see you in a second. Yeah. All right, and I'm back. So, yes, you can make a rogue shooter. Unfortunately, it's going to start with a spear and a sword, but these are the stats that I went with based on an interesting guide and some information that I looked up. I don't much like the way elves look in this game, but it's not much I can do about it. So let's finish this off. i got to pick a, a voice, don't I? So let's see. Now I am the leader of the group. He sounds too burly. I'll teach you a lesson. He sounds too whiny. Not a sound. I like it. Huh? Follow me. Mm, too let's manly. go! I'll go on ahead. I'm here. I shall lead us. Ah! Shh. I'm here. I'm flattered. The ah, I didn't like so much, but everything else was pretty good. Let's let's give it a shot. All right. Oh my god, I've put so many hours in this game. I love it so much. The hand-painted background is so beautiful. Oh, coffee is so good. The caravan master finishes addressing the group. His bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quiver as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods. And beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who would be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. That doesn't sound good. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. Water, eh? We don't have any water in this whole caravan. We have to go get some. It seems weird. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. Sparful nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulders. What are these huge rocks coming from the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Audra. 
Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Growing rocks. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. Interesting. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. All right. Well, let's go check out them berries. I want to chat while I'm sick. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead. I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. <laughs> That's nice. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. <laughs> what kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. He casts a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. Okay. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. A Beowick is a kind of wind that's magical and can kill. Tear the soul right the out man. of your body. Let's get going before you keel over. I think hitting tab will show me. Yeah. Not sure how I feel about this. There you go. Ooh, I can unlock that stuff. I got the ring, a weird pet, and this potion. Let's look around here. That's been a while since I've played some armor. I think I'll be going with light to medium armor as a rogue. I'm going to be using Anyone weapons and standing in the back line. I've got sundries for sale. Guns. And standing in the back line at some point in time. Hayoden has sundries for sale. Let's see if he has guns. We see a man wearing a simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Sure, see what you got. You do not have a gun. But you do have a crossbow. What do I have? Um, let's see what armor I have. I think I want to get rid of some of my stuff. I don't want the shield. Or the spear. Scale armor, not so much either. So. Does she want my shield? I want to think she could use my shield instead of that torch. So let's trade with him. Because Something I'm else you need? And I remember this is worthwhile, that's worthwhile, uh, that, 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 and that. And I would like a crossbow and some light armor. Padded armor is good enough for now, I hope. Shall we trade? That's it for me for now. I am no superhero, but I think I like to go in fast mode. Scroll out. Who's this guy? This is the guy who's supposed to be hunting I'll for me. I'll have your water soon enough. Or get my water. Stream's not going anywhere. Why are you being such a dick, bro? I was gonna die. I'm gonna die if I don't get water. Let's yeah. check by those outcroppings. All right, let's do that. Okay, so combat has started, so everything is paused. We're gonna make her. Use her knock. What is that? Second wind. One per encounter requires athletics. Neat. That wasn't here before. Have her knock this thing down. I. What does that mean? Oh, strange illness. Concentration and fortitude. I'm going to stealth? No. I'm going to do a crippling strike on this to slow it down. Pew. Oh, nice. 
That thing almost, that almost killed it. Now you can knock it down. I think that might have been, let's take a look at the damage here. That 37. Sneak attack, because of the first attack. Okay. That's what we like about it. And we're both still yes. going to attack. And it's dead. Alright, first fight is down. Take At the wolf thingies. Press the tab button so I can see stuff this that's collectible. It. Now, this is where I'm going to get into the role playing and actually playing my character out. Oh, Drifter. And trying to slowly become a character that cares about my companions. Because that's what I didn't do last time. And one thing I loved about this game is at the very end, it told me a wonderful tale based on how I treated my companions. Not just like everybody split up and went their own ways, but like this is what happened to this person's life. This is what happened to this person's life. And it seemed like because I didn't help a lot of people completely finish their objectives, they had terrible lives after the game. So it was a very sad story, even though I beat the game. And I loved it. It was great. You're kind of a mystery to the rest of the caravan. Just some kind of wanderer, the way I heard it. Am I an orphan? Am I a thief? Am I being chased? Or is it none of your business? I'm an orphan. Yeah? How is it you happen to come here? I thought I heard something. It's a big ass truck. I burned down the orphanage and got out of there while I could. No, I've never had a place to call my own. Still looking. I'm a self-made orphan. My parents got what they deserve and now I'm leaving all that behind me. Oh gosh, that sounds evil. Uh, I never had a place to call my home. Still looking. You got a lot on your mind then. Hopefully things work out in the end. But in my experience, they don't always. Kalisha breathes in surrounding. Been a long while since I've been this way. I always did like it. Lord Redrick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of us? It's a hard offer to pass up. You wouldn't find many offers like it in these parts, believe me. Got some big plans in store? I'm gonna settle here, start a new life. Lay low for a while, try not to draw too much attention to myself. Getting filthy rich, I have no idea. I'm just gonna start a new life. Well, who knows? Redrick pays well enough. Maybe we end up neighbors. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. A demon will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Tell me about yourself. I got simple needs like open skies and far horizons. I find work where that lets me. And that lets me live my way. My family wanders too. We started in Deerwood. But my parents ended up in the living lands. I've been a brother. I've got a brother in Ruts High. And another in Ader. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the one. She's the, uh, the only really homebody. What can you tell me about the Deerwood? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be a part of the Adarian Empire. Broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. Interesting. I've been out of touch, but I've been hearing weird kinds of things about lately. People having trouble giving birth. I guess a lot of them. It's been going on for years now. But somehow, it's getting worse. Interesting. With an uneasy tremor in her voice, she adds, I'll have to ask my sister more about it. Uh, why are you here? I have this one hair on my neck that's bothering me. Uh, why are you here? All right, let's get back to camp. Let's get back to camp. Oh, I got it, thank you. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath. That Sparkle's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like. Well, that sounds like a dick move if he knows it can kill me. We should check up on him. The stream's just not too far away. Okay, let's check up on him. So what I like about this is that, I feel, oh yeah, hit pause to get into combat. Oh man, I missed this game. I'm pretending like I don't know what's going on. I mean, I kind of do. I played the beginning half of this game a lot, but I really like to get engrossed in the story. And it's slightly different every time you play it, depending on what your options are, so. I had a great idea for a story chain on YouTube and that's where I write a story of about 300 words and then I read it um, and then I have people comment with their reply as if they're continuing the story with some restrictions and then um, travelers looters or bandits and then whoever's reply I like the most I read as if it's the continuation of the story and we keep going from there and just sort of make a chain of 
a writer's prompt of a bunch of stories. I thought that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, let me know what you think of that idea. Should be pretty interesting. What is this? Party AI is active. How do I do that? Seems interesting. Um, per encounters. Oh, I'm going to cough. One moment. I'm here. Sorry about that. I'm still fighting this cold. What a as surprise. Sparful went tell by my... At least you left the water skins. Come on. This is recent. Not good. Beer. Oh, come on. My perceptions can't be that bad. Oh, I, I know there's a... There's something going on here. Oh, I gotta search. I gotta search. That's why. I gotta scout. I think this is my button for scouting. No. Nope. Uh... There we go. Why is the game paused? Not a sound. The disappointer. So it's a shitty weapon. I remember this being here. It's a shitty gun. It does 20 to 28, whereas this one does 23 to 30. Um, I think it can be uh, improved later on, though. You crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kalisha waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her looking up sharply towards the tree line. You've gained a new quest item, full water skin. Out of the trees emerges Sparful, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves toward you with labored breath. Sparful, are you all right? Kalisha frowns. Sparful's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted deep between his shoulders like an enemy's flag. Ambush! Damn, son. Well, time for you to cripple him. And for you to knock him down. See if we can do that before he gets to us. I'm here. Alright, now you're a little hurt, so I'll move back up. And then attack. Maybe he'll attack me. Ugh. Kind of hoping they switch to her. Come on, finish him. He's almost dead. Ooh, okay, now she can knock him down, and you can cripple him. Let's see how this plays out. Now, if you knock him down, I should get a sneak attack for this bonus for this, right? Let's see. Yeah, because of the knockdown. 40 pierce damage and dead. I like this character already. Instead of making a ranger on, with a pet, it's camp. a rogue with like crazy sneak attack damage. That's cool. Alright, take the bow, although I don't know if the bow is better at low level. I've now got three ranged weapons. I'd be glad to. A gun, a bow, and a crossbow. Let's see. Um slow, twenty-three to thirty-three. Very slow, less damage. Um Fast. A lot less damage though. I don't know. It might be good to switch to the bow after the initial shot with the crossbow. And I think I made that as a hot key. I'm here. It's this one. Yeah. I gotta be careful though, because it switches everybody's weapon. So I gotta make sure it doesn't switch hers. I'm gonna hit F5 for save. Alright. We're already 15 minutes in, so... I might have to break this video up in a little bit. I can hear some noise going on. Okay. I want you to sneak. I want you to get all up in that face and knock this bitch down. Yes? And then I'm going to have you sneak to there. 
This is really slow. Can you attack from here? Boom. Oh, you didn't get much of a sneak attack bonus for that, did you? Come on, reload faster. Eight damage. This guy's tanky, or he's... I'm not getting sneak attack bonus for some reason. Come on, load, 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 load. Alright, we did. Yes? What's going on with her? Oh, she had something going on. Um, hide her. Oh no! Is that the... No, it's not. Okay. I remember now. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Kalisha puts the back of her left hand to her mouth, as if to ward away something poisonous. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade to the neck of the man you recognize as Hayoden, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Here are my options. Why have you done this? We have not trespassed. We merely wish to pass through. That's me being honest. I don't know what they did but I didn't have anything to do with it that's diplomatic. Murderers, you'll pay for each life. Passionate. You'll try to kill us all either way. Why make it easy? Rational. Uh, that's a bit cold. And that's a bit uncaring. I think I'll either be honest or passionate. Let's be passionate. Murderers. Death willed by the gods is not murder, but righteousness. You have trespassed in places of which no mortal man is worthy. The debt is not ours to pay, but yours. So I say again, lay down your arms. Don't trust them. They mean to kill us. Might, perception, resolve. Ooh, we've got a lot of options here. We are innocent on this. Will you not listen to reason? Or might only a fool attack a weak enemy while the stronger one yet lives? Perception, your courage is a mask. None of you has yet slain a true warrior. Resolve, go ahead, kill him now. Do it! Oh man, that sounds scary. Maybe I have a snapping point, and that's why I talk like that. Um, I'm going to call him. Your courage is a mask. None of you has yet slain a true warrior. The man's brow creases questioning. We have killed many trespassers like you. Your kills are sloppy. The wounds on these people are inefficient and off-target. This is the work of untested men accustomed to carelessness. The man bares his teeth. He looks at Hayoden helpless, his eyes shut tightly for the killing blow. The man spits. We'll see whose courage is a mask. He shoves Hayoden towards you. As he does so, the man rakes his blade against Hayoden's torso. Hayoden screams and stumbles forward, a wide gash in his clothes beginning to bloom crimson. The man sets his feet to engage you, his axe raised high. Alright, now we got Hayoden. Hayoden is already all up in here. I want him to blind this sucker. I want to cripple him. Is it just the two? It's just us versus the two. I think I probably should up the difficulty and had three. Um, and you're going to try to knock him down. Let's see how this plays out. Hmm? Oh, they knocked him down. He didn't get to blind anyone. Oh, now the blind is up, and he did some good damage. Okay, he's he's fucked. Yeah, this is a little on the easy side. Okay. Um, let's go with another crippling shot. And another knockdown, so that we can stop Kaoden from dying. Boom. Wow. Okay. Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choking sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. 
At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good, good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to slip beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it was rendering you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowels, Odema's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head. His eyes barely open, he looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! We run inside. What happens next? His art style is beautiful. Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off of your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With the last burst of energy before your arm gives out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Hayodin trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rock, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hayodin and toppled him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hayodin lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you from your position you would have a good chance at hitting your mark. Grab a rock and hurl it at them. Fire at the attacker. I'm going to throw a rock. Your aim is true, and the hit jars Hayoden loose. Is that my rock? I whipped a rock right through him? Damn. Maybe that's the same picture if I used an arrow instead. Lurching to his feet, Hayoden clambers at the base of the rock. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his other hand, you pull with a waning strength, and it feels as though your arm will be jerked from their socket. They hold just long enough for Hayoden to set his feet and join you on the trembled ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. When an attack scores a hit, it does in duration by 50% and increase a crit increases damage in duration by 50%. What was it? A Beowick. Had to be. Hayoden's words come between wheezing gasps. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Can you walk? She eyes the ragged slash across Hayoden's belly. Hayoden's jaws tighten. He nods. Alright guys, that was a good half hour of the intro to this game, which I love. I will be playing more, of course. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me what you think. I will be reading it the same way all the way through. I'm here. And uh, I'll try to keep it very roleplay when I get to play my character. Have yourself a great day. This is Quite Gungeon saying thanks kindly. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye bye. Thanks for watching guys. On the left, a discussion about customization in MMOs, and on the right, the beginning of Divinity Original Sin, the Enhanced Edition.